Hey y'all, so before I get this video started, let me give a quick shout out. These were the first three comments in my last video. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and come show me some love when I drop a new video. What's up you guys, it's Kian Bravon, AKA Coach Key coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, um, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit different. I actually want to do the week two results and put in the week three budget kind of all into one video because I don't know I think separating the videos is just kind of obnoxious at this point but one thing that I am going to start doing is already like calculating the category balances or whatever so that when I come in literally all I'm doing is filling this part out calculating how much money we spent how much is left over for the next week and then going ahead and filling out the next week's budget so you guys let me know if you would rather have it in two separate videos um I don't know. I just thought that this would be a little bit better. So as you guys can see, it's Tuesday. I'm really late putting this out. Honestly, you guys, I'm not really in a good headspace emotionally. Hopefully I don't cry in this video, but y'all can see my phone is on do not disturb. It's been on, been on do not disturb in silent for days now. So I'm finally getting at least the energy to try to do a video. So we'll see how well this goes. All right. So first, let me go ahead and zoom you guys in so as far as fixed expenses we did not have any and of course i don't even have the right tools right now all right there we go so now let's go ahead and go to the variable expenses so like i said i've already um done all of the work we're doing the category balances and everything as far as this week goes and i'm going to zoom you guys back out for a second i've spent quite a bit of money you guys can see i took up this many spaces over here plus these three um and that's really just because um of me going out of town and everything so i had to get gas a couple of times got food you guys know how i am i did have to uh buy some products for my hair as well i went ahead and got my car detailed like i told you guys I would and I gave him a $10 tip I bought me some new uh, tennis shoes which is the same tennis shoes that I bought I think last year or the year before but I ended up getting a hole at the front of them going up a step I don't know I don't know it's like a cloth material uh, and that's pretty much it everything else was when I was out of town I kind of went out of town it, I don't know whatever I don't even feel like talking about it <laughs> so anyway all right so let's first see how much we have left over in the budget and that will help us calculate how much we spent this week so as far as groceries go I did not buy groceries this past week because I was out of town literally for the whole week so 337 28 personal household I still have 32 86 I don't think I should need to get anything else uh, miscellaneous 6314 I did go get a pedicure um, before I went on my trip restaurants I still have 146.38 these two over here don't count because this is for a uh, week three uh, supplements I have $27 I did go ahead and purchase my supplements I forgot to do it the first week uh, travel I still have 549.15 and I'm not going out of town again until the end of this month and that third trip I thought I was going on I'm not going on now so yeah uh, gas I still have $86 shopping I have 126.71 and business I still have the whole $200 so we still have 1568.52 and I'm gonna put that over here. So I'm gonna subtract the 210823 that I had the previous week. So that means that I spent 539.71. All right, so I'm gonna transfer that here. So let me zoom y'all back in. Okay, 
So the total that we spent was the $539.71. Now, as far as unbudgeted goes, I did have unbudgeted expenses of my supplements. You guys know that I separate the supplements from the in, like the budgeted expenses. And I spent $73. And the only reason it's unbudgeted is because I put that in week one's budget. I just forgot to purchase them. So then um, the easiest way for, let me see. No, not really. All right. So let me calculate how much I spent on the actual trip. So $18.82. So I spent $200.85, which I thought I would spend $400. So that means I was under budget by $199.15. So $200.85 plus $73. Is two seventy three eighty five. We spent five thirty nine seventy one, which means that this is how much I spent on the budgeted expenses. Is that right? Oh yeah, that is right. Okay, so I was supposed to spend two eighty, so I was under budget by fourteen dollars and fourteen cents. Cool. Now, as far as savings go, I did not put anything into savings, except I did tell you guys when I set this budget up that I was receiving a $4,000 investment check back. I did see one of you guys comment asking if I was counting that as income. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm probably going to stay behind on comments for another couple of days. Um, yeah, I'm just not there yet. Um, but no, this is not being counted as income. I'm literally putting it or I actually put it directly back into my miscellaneous investment sinking fund. The only reason I didn't count it here is because it's not part of my budget. Like I didn't take it from this income to do it, if that makes sense. So, yeah, so that's that. So um, I have two different transfer dates here because, uh, what do you call it? Zelle only allows you to do $2,500 a day. And I had already sent 220 something to my savings to, because I took it out. Of, I took money out of my travel sinking fund for my Cancun, not Cancun. Where did I go? The Bahamas trip that I wasn't supposed to. So in doing that, I could only transfer this amount. And then the other part of the $4,000 I sent the very next day, basically. So let's go ahead and do the actual down here and what I should end up with uh, as far as the ending balance is 480710 I don't know if you guys can see that yeah so 4681 my income was zero dollars so 53 46 81 so my fixed expenses were zero dollars variable was 539.71 savings was indeed zero so let's see so 53 46 81 and then we subtract the 539 71 and that gives me the 480710 which is what i knew that i needed to have as an ending balance so we are good there all right so now let's go ahead and get into week two three i was gonna say two all right, so week three goes from August 16th to the 22nd. As far as my income goes, I did already write my income in. It is $2,802.23. So I got a small check for working four hours at my PRN job here. Uh, the way that my job works here in St. Louis, I have to work at least once every 90 days. And it doesn't even have to be a full shift. So I did that to make sure that once I came back from my 14-week assignment, which of course is longer than 90 days, that I would still have my job and not have to go through a rehire process. So that was for four hours of work. And then um, my last travel check from my previous assignment was $2692.61. So that gives me $2802.23. So let's go ahead and write that in here. $2802.23. Now, as you guys can see, I already set the budget up. So the week that we're going to be working off of is here. The only things that I have is my car insurance and my budgeted expenses. So car insurance is fixed. Budgeted expenses is the variable expenses. The only thing is my car insurance. I'm not actually going to pay this amount. I'm going to end up paying 
to 1645 and it's because my mom went into um our shared amazon account or whatever and ordered my supplements that she's gonna start taking but she ordered it with my card so i'm gonna subtract that 3375 from this amount but when i actually put in the actuals for this budget i'm gonna put in the actual of the entire car insurance amount because it's gonna come out the same if that makes sense but i have to like withdraw the money from my account to pay her it's not actually like coming directly out of my account so and if you guys are wondering why my car insurance is so much it's because i actually switched from having my own insurance uh with progressive um i switched it last month in july to be on my parents insurance because I do still live with them and it's cheaper for me to do that they wanted to go up on my car insurance by like $70 a month because of a car accident that I got into back in March um, it just ran into the wire median not another person it was in the blizzard in the mountains in Denver and that's my only accident. I don't have any tickets or anything. So I felt it was a little outrageous, but you know, it is what it is. So instead of me staying by myself with one car and one accident, I just decided to be on my parents' insurance because I can do that. I live with them. So in doing that, my car insurance monthly should be like 123, if I'm not mistaken, or 129, something around there. So that's way better than 190. <laughs> so because of when I signed up in July, they ended up having to prorate it for this month for me to pay for July and August and then starting in September, it'll just be paying for uh, one month at a time, of course. So let's go ahead and subtract that 250 40 and $25,51.83 is the remaining. So now let's go to the variable expenses. And again, we just have the budget of 280. And then we'll do unbudgeted. So my total is the 280. Then remaining. is 22.71.83. So now let's go ahead and get into savings. So we're gonna go back to here. Um, and someone asked me, I forgot to mention this as well, and I'll probably make a separate video, but they were asking like about why I use different colors and all of that. I just choose a different color for, well, most of the time it's a different color per category. Um, and that's just so that when I'm looking at this, everything doesn't look like it's the same. So I know when I see purple is something for personal household and I don't have to like search for, oh, where is that time I bought whatever, like that's why I do it. All right. So anyway, so this month, the uh, allocation percentages are 50-50. So let's go ahead and multiply that by 50%. So that's going to get me 1401.11 to keep in my checking for my fixed and variable expenses. So that's $1,401.11 which means that this one is 1401.12 and that is going to be what I sent to savings. So as you guys know, the way that I'm doing my savings, I'm splitting it up 60, 20, 20, 60% 60 will go into travel, 20 will go into miscellaneous investment sinking fund, and then the other 20% will go into my car sinking fund. I'm not putting th anything else into medical because what I was saving for, I got cleared so I'm not gonna need surgery or any like crazy things to do to fix the problem so that's good all right so let's do the travel fund first and then we'll do the miscellaneous slash investment sinking fund and then we'll do the car sinking fund and just so you guys know I'll update you guys because I don't do um monthly updates like on my net worth or my savings and sinking funds accounts or anything anymore but i do want to update you guys on the amount that i have in my savings so this is what i have now i don't know if you guys can see that 
So as of now, like across all of my cash accounts, I think I have almost $60,000 if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, anything that I could like completely liquidate and that doesn't include like the value of my car or anything. So I think I'm doing pretty good. I just, I'm ready to get my trading and investing stuff off the ground though, because that's what's really important for me personally. All right, so these two I sent on, let's see here. So I sent this one, these two on Saturday, which was the 17th. No, this one was the 18th and this one was the 17th and this one was the 17th. And again, it was because of that whole $2,500 a day thing. All right. So out of 1401, 12, 60% went to my travel sinking fund. So that's 840, 68. So this is what was remaining, and I divide that in half for the other two. So 280.22 and 280.22. And this is 1401.12. So the only other income I have coming in this month will be from like a couple hundred dollars from YouTube. And outside of that, I don't have anything else. So uh, right now, my checking account is pretty high. And that's just because I've earned all the money I need to pay for all my expenses. And I do have that at least that one trip left for the end of the month. And I'm going to New Orleans. All right. So the beginning balance is the ending balance from last week. And that's 4807.10. The income is the 2802.23. So let's go ahead and add that up. Uh -oh. And that gives me $7,609.33. So if I subtract the two fifty forty four dollars fixed, which I'm going to be taking that out, I don't know, probably tomorrow. I think I have to go to work tomorrow. So I'll just do it tomorrow. I really, oh, I really don't feel like leaving the house. 1401.12. All right, so 250.40 minus 280 minus 1401.12 gives me 56.77.81, which outside of the small amount of income I have coming in from YouTube, um, I basically have about $1,700 to last me for the last, well, really the last three weeks, because it's this week and the last two weeks of the month, which I think that I will be just fine. So that's where we are at for the week. That is everything. So how I spent my money last week and then how everything should go this week. The next couple of weeks shouldn't be, I have a net in here and it's driving me crazy. Um, killed it um <laughs> so yeah so that should be how everything goes um and hopefully i can put these out every week hopefully this little spell that i'm going through does not last very long but i hope you guys enjoyed this video please give this video a thumbs up if you guys have any questions leave them down below um subscribe if you haven't already <laughs> but other than that i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys